Hello, welcome to Beth Roars, where we look at your favourite singers to find out what makes them them. I have never listened to either of these singers before, but I do know that Alejandro Fernandez is one of the best-selling singers in Mexico, so I thought I would find out why. So if you don't know, this is Alejandro. You can hear the flamenco in that straight away. Now, this is not my genre of music. I, I don't know the nuances of it, but I do know that flamenco takes a, a lot of its influences from Arabic music, and you can certainly hear that in those little runs there. Now, this is Diego El Segala, I think is how you say it, which means Diego the Langostine. And I don't know why he's called a Langostine, apparently because of his powerful voice, but I've never heard a, a loud Langostine. Hmm. Anyway, I'm sure there's probably like a Mexican myth around it that I don't know. And Alejandro Fernandez is the son of Vincente Fernandez, uh, who was a really, really famous ranchero singer. So he comes from a family of singers. Uh, I love flamenco singers. Oh, that was such a big, open, wonderful vowel. And why am I talking about that? You could hear how he sung all the way through. He didn't fall off the end. That note was like held. It had vibrato the whole way through. He was keeping it open. He had a nice, relaxed jaw, a nice, relaxed tongue. And something else, he was keeping his soft palate up. So he was keeping a lot of space in the back of his mouth. Now for a lot of singers, if you want to get that big, really resonant sound, I always say it's almost as if you've got like a little circle at the back of your mouth between the back of your tongue and your soft palate. So if you touch the front of your mouth, you'll feel the roof of your mouth is like hard. And as you bring your tongue back, there's a squidgy bit. That is your soft palate. So it's as if you've got a circle there and you don't want that to get squashed. And that will give you that big ah, sort of sound. Whereas I feel like Diego's going for a slightly different sound. Both are valid, they're just different. Mm. I want you to pay attention to the shape of their mouths. Diego's is wider and narrower, which gives you that kind of more direct sound. And it's going to be partially helping him with that kind of gritty sound as well. That's where that grit is coming from. Whereas Alejandro is really, really open. He's like, ah, and that's giving him that big warm sound. So it's not just their natural makeup. It's the way they're approaching the notes. However, they did more match. Diego matched more to Alejandro actually when they sung together in harmony there. <laughs> oh, so much joy! They're so smooth. Con que yo del viento. Se lleva 
por donde quiera Te quiero Qué pena verte perdido Como tiene pierde una estrella It's so interesting watching their shapes. So, he's there. What's Diego do? Those runs are so slick. So how do you learn to do that? So the key is making sure you know every single note, really, really getting them precise and learning them really, really slowly, and then speeding it up bit by bit by bit. There's no point in kind of doing something that isn't quite right really quickly and um, not really understanding exactly what each note is. It's better to do it slower, but more precise. Um, you'll eventually add that speed on and on and on. Now, um, it's really interesting because you've got a really distorted sound from Diego and Alejandro's got a really clean sound. And distortion is um, when the nice, even vibrations from your vocal cords get disrupted and they start becoming irregular and it sounds like noise. So this can happen at the vocal cord level and I actually think it might be quite natural for Diego. So it might be at the cord level or it might be a little bit above that level. But something is getting in the way of that airflow to kind of disrupt it and that's what makes it kind of sound cool and raspy. Um, and it could be to do with the shapes he's making as well. Whereas Alejandro is really nice and open, nice and relaxed, and those lovely even vibrations from the vocal cords are not being disrupted, but he has a big old resonant tone. Ah. Uh. Uh. Great playing. If you're wondering what those ear pieces are for, I made a video on that. I'll link it in the description. Now, I don't speak any Spanish, but I, I do... I can hear how clear their words are and partially this is to do with Spanish consonants being a little bit harsher or um, more crisp than in English a lot of the time but also it's just really good singing you can hear every single consonant and they're singing on the vowel so if it was like a they're not kind of more thinking through the cur, they're going, not going like that k is really crisp and then they open to that vowel. It was like a Together are so impressive. Yeah. So 
so aggressive. Ugh. Okay, I was being quite technical in that one, but it there is an absolute reason that this these are people that are selling a lot of records because that was fantastic, fantastic singing. And the way that they could sing together and really, really match up all those runs Oh, it's so difficult to do that alone, but to get those rhythms exactly the same together, great singing. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.